Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She was is the first and only woman to break 159 in a 200 short course meter backstroke. She was the 2020 Swim Swam Female Swimmer of the Year, uh, just awarded, I think it was yesterday. Uh, we have the ple- pleasure, honor, privilege to sit down and talk with Kaylee McEwen today. Kaylee, how's it going? Hi guys, nice to be on here. It's a privilege of mine to be on here and you know, it's pretty exciting for me as well. It, it has been exciting for me as a swim fan to watch your performances the last couple months. It's been super cool <laughs> in, in a year where we don't get to see a lot of swimming. Um, and, and it seems like you've been taking full advantage of every, every opportunity you've gotten to race. Um, so let's start with the last couple meets you went to. Was it the, did the short course meet come first? Um, so my training group, we went down to Brisbane and we did, um, just a little local meet. I think it was the 2020 metal shots meet. Um, you know, we were just told to load up on events and, you know, I wasn't expecting to race any good times or, you know, race good at all. You know, it's more training than anything. So, you know, to come away with, um, some really solid times, I was quite surprised. And then obviously leading into short course two weeks later from there. Um, <laughs> that, what metal shots, I saw the name of that meet and I'm like, that sounds like such a, such an, like an age group kind of <laughs> meet name, what metal, like, as in you had shots to get medals. Is that where that name comes from? Um, no. So for us, Queensland, um, that meet I had attended was just, uh, pretty much a meet where, um, age groupers or open swimmers were able to get qualifying times for our States, which were then held in December. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I remember looking at the name of the meet and, you know, it, it, you, <laughs> you went 204 and then 200 long course meter backstroke there. And usually, you know, with a time like that, you like the meet name is like world championships or Australian yeah. trials or something like that. And it's like metal shots. It was, it was a pretty funny contrast. Um, yeah. and so then, so then you go to short course two weeks later and how, you, you know, how, after coming off of that, you know, 204 tuner backstroke, how are you feeling heading into short course? Um, I'm going to be quite honest. I absolutely hate short course. I'm not the <laughs> great fan, so expecting much. It was kind of just something fun, something different. We don't get to race it a lot in Australia. Um, so yeah, I was just hoping to get a little PBs here and there, but you know, to break 159 was pretty awesome. And then to put up some other really solid PBs was not unexpected, but unexpected at the same time. <laughs> um, and I mean, in a meet like that, what is your mental preparation? Like just, are you kind of going through the same motions you normally would at a championship meet? Did you rest at all for that? Did you shave? <laughs> um, definitely shave down. I think all swimmers do that one, but my, the USC team, we had about a three day drop taper. So just, you know, um, dropped off the kilometers and intensity in our sessions, um, which really helped. I do a lot better off those kind of tapers rather than like the two to one week to two week tapers. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so then, I mean, do you have pre-race routines you do before races like that? Was that mean a prelims finals or was that just a timed finals? Um, so our virtual short course, usually it would be heats and finals if it was a normal year, but of course, 2020 is not a normal year. So yeah. We only had to swim the event once. So yeah, it was straight, straight finals for us, okay. which I don't mind. I'm only going to swim a turn in once. <laughs> that, especially if it's short course and turns aren't your favorite, that seems like a win-win. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so, so you, you, you go to the short course meet, you go, like you said, a ton of PBs, you're feeling good. I mean, you said it was kind of unexpected, but also kind of expected. Um, and then two weeks later you have Queensland championships, uh, which is long course. And, and you go like 
six best times and six events. You swim the hundred free, you swim the hundred breast, and then yeah. also you swim IMs and backstrokes. Um, what was that meet like for you? Um, again, state titles every year for us. We are told to load up on events, so. You know, I was quite fatigued going from one race to the other, but I love doing that kind of stuff. It's a challenge. So, you know, I had seen the season that I had coming off the back of COVID and I was like, why not just try one last time for the year to see what I can do? So, you know, I just had that mindset of, you know, trying to chase those times that I already set for myself. And I think that was a big turning point for me in December with the times I'd put up. Yeah. So did you have goal times this year? um heading heading especially heading into december oh sorry um, oh was that sorry yeah did you have goal times for this year i guess even before covid started uh i'd like to think my coach and i we don't necessarily have goal times we're more process orientated so whether that be you know like you got to do 12 kicks to the first 15 and then 12 kicks off the first wall and just mm -hmm. that kind of stuff more so skills than you know, the time-based kind of stuff. Because if you focus on the time, then you're throwing everything else that you train for out the window pretty much. Seems like a healthy mindset. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when you, you know, when you go six personal bests at your last long course meet, um, I mean, do you, is that satisfying for you? Does that make you want to go faster were you like oh I can do this 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 and this better um for me I I actually find it a bit nerve-wracking because I'm like I wasn't expecting that so like what do I have to do now to be faster than I was that you know the meets I've just swum at um so yeah I think there's always room for improvements there's always one percenters that you can do here and there whether that's nutrition gym physio massage all those kind of things I think like I said, any swimmer can have the one percenters to improve on. Yeah, that that makes sense. That would be a, a bit nerve wracking, especially if you didn't expect something like that. I mean, did 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 you have one swim in particular where you were like, "Whoa!" Did not see that um, one coming. I definitely trained for the two hundred more than the hundred. So when I went under fifty eight, um, you know, behind Reagan, who was the first swimmer to ever do that, that was like a wall moment for me I was like that that doesn't usually happen that's not supposed to happen but you know I'm not taking anything for granted I'm, I'm definitely proud of that yeah that's, it's quite an accomplishment um but that is also super cool that you know didn't see it coming and now you have a, you have a new mountain to climb I guess um so <laughs> let's let, let's back up a little little bit uh COVID started for, I guess for the, for the U S it started about mid March. Um, when did you start to feel the effects? You know, when did you guys start locking down and, and things really changed for you due to COVID? Um, I think we were around the same around March, you know, we got, we were told, you know, guys, you're going to have to do gym at home and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we were frantically trying to buy equipment online because we weren't able to take it from our gym <laughs> and, you know, everyone else was doing that in Australia. So there was like no stock of anything. So yeah. for me personally, I had to resort to running. Um, I think every swimmer kind of hates running. <laughs> like, um, so I, I did struggle during lockdown, but thankfully we have really nice beaches in Australia. So we're able to go for like ocean swims and that kind of stuff. But it's definitely a blessing in disguise also, because, you know, it gives a lot of not only myself, but I know a lot of my teammates, we enjoyed it because it was just a refresher and it just a changes, change in mindset heading into, you know, next year and the end of this year. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. I think this has forced people into a lot of uncomfortable situations, but also maybe, you know, been, been a good thing um, because of that for a lot of people and, and put people in situations that we're uncomfortable at first, but now it's like, Oh, okay. You know, this, maybe this was a, a positive blessing in disguise, if you will. Um, yeah. you guys have a lot of good beaches. I've heard about a lot of them, uh, which is super cool. Where, where specifically do you live? Um, so I live in Queensland on the sunshine coast. Okay. Um, I did live at Dick now we moved to Sippy Downs, which is right across from where I train, which is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, so the Sunshine Coast, what, I mean, do you guys get a lot of sun? What makes the Sunshine Coast a good place to be? 
I mean, the name speaks for itself, really. You know, we get a lot of sun. You know, the beaches are really nice up this way. And it's it's good because it's, um, you know, it's not too busy. I mean, it's getting a lot busier than what it was when I first moved here. But it's just a relaxing place to be. And I think that helps with all the business that goes on with each other's lives. Like, just to be able to go to the beach, relax, um, is something that us Australians definitely take for granted, I think. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that I, every Australian I've had a podcast with, they just talk about the beach. I'm like, man, it must be nice. Um, so, so sorry, backing up to, to running to gym at home. We talked to James Magnuson who is selling gym equipment now. And he's like, yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> this yeah. Pandemic has really been a, a, a jump start for my company, but, uh, so you were, you were running, you were swimming in the beaches. Did you, were you doing any kind of gym at home as well or lifting just a lot of body weight stuff you know my dad managed to piece up a bit of like a chin-up bar kind of thing so that I hate chin-ups also um (laughs) I'm not doing great on this podcast I'm saying all the things that I hate (laughs) um yeah so it was just a lot of body weight stuff that I we managed to do um my gym coach mark he definitely put in an effort to try and give us something to do whether it was you know like a circuit where you go for a k run then come back do push-ups chin-ups dips that kind of thing Mm. i that's that sounds like such a a swimmer circuit yeah but (laughs) it seems good uh and so how long were you in that situation of you know circuits body weight running um, I'm going to say it was a solid like two months, maybe. I honestly, it, it's gone so fast that I've kind of just put it behind me. I <laughs> don't look at it anymore. <laughs> we were put down into lockdown for quite a time and I think it's definitely paid off now. I think um, we're one of the best countries in the world at the moment for, you know, COVID cases. We still got a few um, in New South Wales um, in Melbourne, but Queensland, I don't think we have any. I don't think. <laughs> don't quote me on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So, I mean, but two months out of, you know, your normal routine, uh, again, you said ocean swims were a possibility. How often were you actually getting to s- touch water during that period? Yeah. Um, I tried at least twice a week because it was our winter here. So I didn't actually have a wetsuit. Couldn't buy a wetsuit because okay. it was out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was really cold, so I didn't, it wouldn't be too cold. Um, but, yeah, I'd say it was definitely around twice a week I'd try to get feel for the water. Okay. Well, I mean, I think most people have done – most swimmers have done some sort of ocean open water swim, but I mean, do you think that served that purpose of, of being able to keep your feel knowing that the ocean's – I mean, it's pretty different than a pool – Oh, it was very different. You know, like we would only do max, you know, a K, K and a half kind of thing. Okay. Um, just used to it at all. And it was quite choppy and there's a lot of surf. So it was different, but it was a good kind of different. Yeah. I mean, and so my next question, when you finally did get back to kind of normal training, training in the pool, I mean, how was that feeling for you? Did you feel totally just noodly or were you like, okay, this is, I actually feel pretty strong in the water after a week or two. Um, I definitely didn't feel strong at all. Uh, but I think a lot of my teammates were just so excited to be, you know, back into our normal routines, back into training, back into training hard. Um, so I think as a team, we kind of just bonded all together and that's what has made our second half of 2020 so much better. Yeah. Just, just being able to swim. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, how, how long do you feel like it took you to kind of get back into the swing of normal swimming training? Um, I'd say it was probably around a month, um, maybe a little bit more, you know, getting back to those times and how we were pre COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'd say around about a month. Okay. Nice. Not bad. And then, and then you just started blowing best times out of the water. So, (laughs) but a bing, bada boom. Um, (laughs) so your sister Taylor, do you have more siblings or is it just you and Taylor? No, I. Okay. Uh, your sister, she's six years older than you. Yep. 
uh, Olympic medalist, world championship medalist, uh, breaststroker. So, you know, it goes without saying she's kind of a weirdo, but yeah. uh, <clears throat> is, is, is Taylor still swimming and do you train with her? Um, so when I moved to the USC Spartans, it was mid 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister was still training under Chris Mooney then, but after Commonwealth Games in 2018, she decided to make the move to Michael Bowl. Um, I think it was more a mutual thing. You know, she had been with my coach since she was 11, I believe. So, you know, it was quite a good change for her in the sense it was something new, something different. So, yeah, she's still swimming and, you know, tickling, ticking, ticking along, um, trying to make it to Tokyo. Yeah. It's in, so Michael Bull is in Brisbane. He's actually moved to the Gold Coast now. Okay. Which is yeah. how far from the Sunshine Coast? It's about a two hour drive. Okay. So you, you guys aren't yeah. too, too far apart. No, no, not at all. Um, so come but, yeah. Good. Nice. Um, so I, you know, I think swim siblings are important, um, but you guys are, are, are pretty far apart in age. Um, I mean, did you grow up swimming together at all? Was there a period where you were training in, in 16 to 18 together? Yeah. Um, I would say Taylor's probably what got me into swimming as much as I am now. You know, I think being the age I was like six years difference, as you were saying, it gave me a chance to look at everything that she had done. And I was like, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, you get to travel all around the world for something that you're good at and you get, you know, you get funding here and there from it as well. I was like, that's a pretty good setup. I was like, I should try. To- <laughs> and when I got offered to train with her, I didn't take the offer. Up. I mean, I did take the offer. I was like, who wouldn't do that? Um, so yeah, it was good. It was definitely good to be training alongside of the me. And we definitely had our hiccups here and there as siblings do. Um, but I think it was more just our competitiveness. I think it's hard not to be competitive with, with your siblings because you're around them all the time. Right. And, and you're both in a sport that's hyper competitive. Um, I mean, do you, do you, for the most part, were your, you know, if, if you guys got in an argument or something, was it mostly just swimming related Oh, sometimes, you know, she'd turn around and be like, you're such an idiot kind of thing. <laughs> and stuff. But, you know, it's typical sibling thing. Like I said, it wasn't anything that was, you know, going to affect our swimming performances or our training. Yeah. Did you guys train well together as in, you know, you're, you're primarily a backstroker now. She's, she's kind of more of a breaststroker now. I don't yeah. know. Did you guys overlap in IM training or um, yeah. what, what was training together like? Um, so our training program is often, you know, the freestyles go together and the, uh, form strokers are usually thrown into an IM group, which is how I think I've picked up my IM swimming. So we would often be in that group together, um, training with one another. And I'd always make her lead because I was like, no, you're older, you're faster, you can go. (laughs) Um, so yeah, that was pretty much the only time during our sessions that we would, you know, be with one another. Did, uh, I mean, it's not, we, we've seen your breaststroke progress. Um, did you guys ever race in breaststroke or did she ever uh, try to match you in backstroke? She's tried backstroke, but she's just, she admits it herself. She's like, I'm horrible. I don't know. What do I, what, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> but she's been really good. She's actually um, tried to help me in my breaststroke when she was training with us. But yeah, unexpectedly, I've just become all right at breaststroke. <laughs> Uh, is, I mean, is that something you worked on a lot or is something, um, you've worked on technically you've worked on in like more of a pace thing? Yeah, definitely more the technique side of things, you know, just changing up, trying to get, you know, more glide through the water, less resistance. Uh, so I think that was the main reason why I dropped so much time, just, you know, focusing on the technique side. What, what specifically about the technique ha- do you feel has helped um, when you're focusing on that? Um, I just couldn't coordinate the arms to the legs. So uh, all my timing was out of whack. So um, along with my coach, Chris, and Rowan Taylor, who's now Australia's head coach, um, has been coming in, you know, every fortnight or so and just helping with like the hand movements. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then when the hands were done, we tried to piece the legs back in and then, yeah, so it's all coming coming together. <laughs> oh, 
Fortnite. Yeah. I love that you use that expression. Is that common there? We only say like once a month. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I guess so. I, I've never, I feel like anyway, that's a great, that's a great expression. I just think that's cool. Um, so sorry, back to swimming. Um, <laughs> so, so you, you, you've been working on your breaststroke. Obviously you, you train backstroke and I am, do you have a fit, a particular like style of training that you enjoy the best? Um, I definitely love changing it up. I think that if, you know, I was only good at backstroke, I'd definitely struggle because, you know, you can't swim well all the time with your one stroke. So for me, when I'm not having a great day doing backstroke, I'll often switch to IM. So I think just having both of them hand in hand with one another is a great training combination. You know, you get your aerobic fitness in the IM and then you get your anaerobic capacities and all that kind of stuff doing the backstroke. So you're basically a learned scholar of swimming. You know, you know what you're doing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, but so, so you like a good mix, which, which seems pretty good. And I don't, I, I feel like a lot of swimmers aren't like that. I've even been using phrases like you're primarily a backstroker, but, but that's, I don't think that's a good, uh, good way to approach swimming. I think you, you know, keeping an open mind and saying, well, I like to switch it up. I like all the strokes, you know, more of a healthy, maybe more of a healthy perspective. Do you think the people you've been around have, have kind of influenced that thought process in you? For sure. I think definitely more so my coach, you know, he's like, it's good to not always focus on the one thing. Um, for me personally, I get bored quite easily. So, you know, having the different mix up is something that I love doing. Um, and it just happens to work really well for me as an individual and some of my teammates as well. Yeah. Do you, do you have uh, certain teammates that really push you along in training or you really enjoy training with them? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's also something that was really positive about 2020 is that our team has made such an effort to get along with one another um, and it's just a happy environment to be in because if you're turning up to training every day and you're in a team where, you know, it's toxic in a way, you're not going to be enjoying yourself. You're not going to, you know, want to put in all the effort that you're capable of, whether if you have a happy environment, you're happy to be there. You're happy to do the things that are there. You push one another along in a positive way. Yeah. Would, were you, would you say that you have had a, a spot like that where, you know, whether it be the environment wasn't the best or maybe you were just in a lower period. I mean, have you been through something like that in your career so far that you've kind of said, okay, yeah. this is what I know I don't want? Yeah, for sure. But you can't, you don't have control on, you know, the people who come in and out of your group, that's obviously up to your coach. Um, but I think my coach has a really good idea of what personalities work with what in our group. And he understands that, like I was saying before that if you want to race, well, you've got to be in a happy training environment. So I think having a coach that understands that and wants the best out of his athletes has really improved our, all of us in a whole, really. <laughs> yeah. How big is your training group? Um, it's actually quite small. So we're split into um, paras and able bodies at the university. So the para group I think has about uh, 10 people and they're coached by Nathan Doyle. And then us, uh, we've also got 10, I think we've got eight females, two males, um, which sucks the males in a way, but, um, <laughs> but we often come together as groups, do a few training sessions with one another here and there, but our gym um, conditioning and stuff is all combined. Gotcha. And so uh, what is your, what's a normal weekly schedule for you? Like how many swims, how many gyms do you have? So we don't do weeks. <laughs> it's so confusing to try and explain to people. We actually Tell do, me more. <laughs> we do a three week cycle. So um, 17 days and then four days off. So it's different. Yeah. So the first week it's um, you start on the Monday as a single Tuesday as a double and you go through to that. So you end the weekend with a double Saturday, single Sunday. And okay. then Day through to the following through to the Wednesday is a double single double and then after Wednesday it's all singles up until the following Wednesday 
and then you have your four days off. <laughs> it's so whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, and then four days completely off. Yep. The, that is, I've never heard anything like that. Have you ever heard anything like that aside from where you train right now? Uh, no. So we, our, um, gym coach, Mark McKean, you know, he put it forwards to the coaches and we're like, why don't we try this? Um, we've got time. So we started at the end of 2018. So, um, we trialed it all the way through to worlds. And then after worlds, we kind of sat down, talked about it. And we, as a team kind of agreed that we like it. It's something different, something challenging. So I think we're just going to keep going with that um, through to whenever, <laughs> whenever someone gets sick of it, decides to change it. <laughs> My mind is so blown right now. Uh, this is, this is so cool because yeah, that's, I don't think any, I've never heard of a swim team doing this before. I have so many questions. So, <laughs> um, so when you first started doing this, you, I mean, you said it was challenging. What, what challenges were there? I think just the way it's all planned out, it's hard to get your head around, you know, you're doing something different every day, every week mm -hmm. is different. Um, our first week of training is supposed to be, you know, like a, a cumulative phase. So you're doing really long kilometers aerobic kind of stuff and then when you go into the single weeks it's focusing on the speed the anaerobic capacities the power all that kind of stuff so it's hard because you've got to mentally prepare and then you've got to get your nutrition right um you know your gym your weight your conditioning you've all got to try they it just fluctuates a lot really mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah and so <laughs> the is the does you said you were gym coach for originally suggested this yes um, what was his reason I mean what you know why did he say oh this is what I think we should do I have been told but um I can't remember in all honesty you know I, okay. I get told and I just go out and do them or, and you know I complain about it here and there but I'd like to think that I do it the most part um but I think that he definitely put a lot of research and time into it and he was like, why not do this? It's like the same as training in a week's block, but you can do it over three weeks mm -hmm. instead of, you know, having to chop and change it within the one week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I'll have to bring him on the podcast. Jeez Louise. <laughs> um, so you, I mean, you get three weeks of training in, you have four days off. You, you said you did this through worlds. Yeah. Um, I, you know, at Worlds, it seems like you had a pretty good meet. But yeah, I mean, I guess heading into Worlds, how did you feel th about this training? Um, just as as in terms of its effectiveness. Yeah. So uh, five weeks out from our trials held in Adelaide, we actually went back to one week cycles. Um, okay. Yeah. So we, you know, because that's the only way that we had trained previous for our tapers and whatnot so he's like we'll stick to that um and I think that's just stuck so um through 2019 we had those five weeks of singles and then we you know raced and then we had another three weeks I think it was so we just stuck to the singles so okay. you know it's um it's a good it's good because you know what you're doing you know you've done it before so it's nothing different um I quite like going back to it, you know, because it's something familiar. You quite like going back to just single week plans? Yeah. Well, leading into races. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And then are your gym workouts coordinated within the three week plans also? Yeah. So we do gym doesn't change. We stick to the Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. Okay. Um, yeah. But the, the weight, in how much fatigue kind of varies as in like some sessions it might be you know a five out of ten where there might another session might be an eight out of ten kind of thing okay all right i'm beginning to get an idea of what this may look like in theory i'm really bad at explaining so i hope that <laughs> does thing. no we're, we're we're getting there uh so once you got back into the water 
um, post, well, like post lockdown, uh, did this cycle kind of start back up or did you guys start much slower? No, we were straight back into it. Um, you know, why change something that you've been doing? So we just went straight back in. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And you were, I mean, did you, was there a ramp up period or, I mean, I know you mentioned it, it took about a month to feel like back in it, but um, like yardage wise, were you guys kind of right back into it or or did you gradually build? We, we definitely gradually built up, you know, you can't go from zero to a hundred, otherwise you'll end up with injuries, sicknesses, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we started off like the three K sessions that built to five and then so on. Yeah. Okay. Now, so let's, let's take the 2019 season, like pre trials, pre worlds. Um, yeah. W- when you were training in those three week cycles, are you someone who can race pretty fast in season? Um, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, all the races that I had from 2020 were in season. We didn't have the weeks where, you know, we tape it off. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'd like to say that I do race quite well with a little bit of fatigue and it's something that we're looking at changing for my taper, um, for next year. So we're just working with all the sports, um, analysis staff to try and work together to try and figure out what's best for my body. Gotcha. Interesting. And do you guys do a lot of race stuff in practices as well? Um, so we, uh, often on our single sessions, we'll often suit up maybe three times a week. So, you know, we're in suit quite a lot. So when we go to a meet, it's nothing different. You know, we train in suits all the time. Smart. I like that (laughs) philosophy a lot. Um, that's cool. And so what, do you have a favorite set that you've done in the last six months or a year? Um, specifically a racing set that you did well on, or you just enjoyed? Um, one that I did a week out from the metal shots meet was short course. We did 10, two hundreds on two thirty or max. Um, It's actually like I looked at it, I was like, there is no way I can do that. But, you know, I was putting up some really solid times and I think it's not necessarily that I enjoyed the set. I just enjoyed the challenge that was there. And, you know, obviously I swam well in it. So I was like, yes, that's a plus. Were they all backstroke? Yeah. Yeah. In a suit? Yeah. What is it like? (laughs) That just sounds so, that sounds so hard. It's 10 100s. Sorry, it's not that oh, bad. 10, now. Okay, on 230. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. That's way That's different. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. And like, what what kind of times were you throwing up for those hundreds? Um, so the first one, I did a bit of a bludge. I was like, oh, see how I'm feeling. So I went 61, and then the rest were all 58s. Okay. So yeah, yeah, pretty, very consistent, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Nice. Um, okay. So let's, let's move to the time off. You get four days off in a three week cycle. What do you do? Um, obviously sleep ins, uh, we don't <laughs> sleep ins on our three weeks off. So sleep in, you know, catch up with some friends, do all your studies, that kind of thing. Do some house stuff, mm-hmm. just get your life organized, ready for the next three weeks that are coming up. <laughs> Okay. Wow. I'm just trying to picture four day weekends in three weeks. That's just crazy. Are you currently in school? Um, I was doing uh, primary education leading up to worlds, uh, but I decided to defer that. And in the meantime of deferring, I picked up an aged care course online, which I really ended up loving to do. And, you know, I'm still doing it now. I've got my placement coming up in February. So, you know, that should be exciting. Yeah. What, what happens after, after placement? Um, I'm yet to decide. I'll definitely look at doing something else, whether it's on another online course or, you know, volunteering here and there, just nothing too exhausting, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, swimming for now is the main focus, but I'm the kind of person that I can't just be doing the one thing all the time. I need a bit of a distraction, which is why I said like, I had deferred, but I still picked something else up. Yeah. Um, I, w- I was going to ask you about that. It, I mean, it seems like 
you, you are someone who, you, like you said, you get bored easily. You like having that distraction. I mean, when you're not swimming, which is a lot, uh, what, you know, what are you doing? What do you do to, to get your mind out of the pool? Yeah. So a few of us from the pool and, you know, my school friends as well, we absolutely love, you know, four wheel driving, going camping up the beach and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, you know, it is a bit of an effort to get up there, but once you're up there, it's really relaxing and enjoyable and there's not a lot of people around. So you're just kind of in your own little world. Uh, Sunshine Coast, how many people are there? Is it like a big, is it a city? Ooh. Is it a town? No, I, there's no like real high rises apart from, you know, apartments on the beachfront, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely not a city, but yeah, it's kind of just like a low key, I don't know, town. I, I wouldn't call it a town. It's like a, a small little city. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. and it's pretty easy to get away from people then? Yeah. It's definitely getting more populated as, you know, people are kind of realizing that the sunny coast is a really good place to live. So it wouldn't surprise me that in the next, you know, five, 10 years that there are a lot of high rises, a lot of houses popping up. I mean, they already are. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you, you like, you like relaxing with friends, camping, beaches. I mean, that sounds, sounds like good pastimes. Do you have any other hobbies that you are pretty active with outside of the pool? Um, I probably shouldn't be telling everybody, but I did buy myself a motorbike. Um, (laughs) I do have all the safety equipment that goes with it. So I don't go too dangerous on it. I just kind of, you know, plot along. Um, yeah. (laughs) That sounds like a good pastime. Uh, do you have a car there? Yeah, I do. Um, I, that's the car I take up for driving. I absolutely love it. It's funny, a lot of Australians, you know, we get into, you know, making our cars look great um, just so we can take it places, really. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Now you have a motorbike, which is just like the coolest form of transportation. Yeah. Um, Okay. So um, I want to get into just a couple past meets, Um, you know, world championships last year coming off of this, this trial period of the, of the three week training blocks. Um, how were you feeling heading into that meet? Just, I guess, mentally nerves wise. Um, I definitely knew I had put up some really, really solid training times, you know, the best I'd ever done in, you know, my short swimming career. Um, so, you know, I had the confidence there of, you know, I had no doubt of swimming slow, if that makes sense. Like there was always a chance of, doing the same times or if not a little bit faster considering our trials are like a month apart. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, with any athlete, well, I shouldn't say any athlete, most athletes get quite nervous. Um, I know within myself, I, you know, the local meets, I'm not so nervous. I'm quite mellow. I don't really care and chilled, relaxed. But, you know, when you get up to like the trials and the world's um, coming off games, your nerves are like an all time peak. So, you know, I'm still working on ways on how to, you know, dose them down a bit. But at the end of the day, you know, the adrenaline is what gets you across the line. Yeah. And so how are you feeling? Let's, let's go to the 200 back final. Um, you know, what, tell me, take me through uh, your process of getting ready for that race and then what your adrenaline was like there and how you were able to rope in those nerves to cross the finish line. So the final of the two back was my last race of the meet. I had swum a lot of, well, the 50 and 100 previous to it. Um, and, you know, you got the heat semis and finals. So it ended up being quite a lot of races to swim. Um, so, you know, I in my head I was like, oh, I'm so fatigued. Like I wish I could be done already. And I was like, no, this is my main event. Can't be thinking that yet. So, you know, I was stuck in the the middle where I'm like, oh, I wish I had more rest kind of thing. But like I said, I think switching my mind to, you know, it's the last race, give it your all, you know, Mm -hmm. might as well just give it all while you can. (laughs) Um, And then, I mean, do you remember anything about that race? Um, Not really, to be honest, like anywhere you go, like I remember in Budapest, my first world champs, I was too even nervous to look up into the crowd. So I think taking from that, I don't even look up anymore. I just straight down. And a lot of people are like, why don't you smile? I'm like, because I'm just like, I'm too, 
the smile. Um, so yeah, I just, I tend to just focus on myself, you know, kind of put the curtains up and just focus on what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like it, it worked out all right. Uh, were yeah. you happy with that result of, you know, you, you win silver in the 200 backstroke at world champs. Um, were you, were you ha- pleased with that result? Yeah. I mean, I would have liked to have gone faster considering, you know, how I said um, I was doing really good times and training and all that kind of stuff, but I would never, ever change it for the world. I mean, to stand up on the podium alongside a world record holder um, is pretty awesome. I must say. <laughs> uh, and, and now being a world record holder yourself. Um, yeah, that, that, that seems like, seems like a good accomplishment for, for where you were at at the time. Uh, and then you swam on the medley relay in prelims as well, right? Yeah. Um, so Australia likes to obviously keep their best swimmers till the finals, you know, saving them a little bit. So, um, I saw us in the heat swims and then minute at the 10, obviously took it up for the finals as she, you know, got silver in the hundred backstroke as well. So I was quite, you know, I'm quite happy for her to do that. Minna and I get along really well. Was that a pressure situation for you? I mean, swimming a prelims relay? Yeah, I swam a mixed medley relay in, at Worlds in 2017. That was my first event of the meet. So, you know, you do get quite nervous because you're like, it's not just me. Like if I, you know, I'm the one starting the race. If I get DQ'd, it's, that's it for the rest of my team. So that's my main concern. I'm not necessarily worried about my time. It's literally just starting the race. Gotcha. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so, you know, you have gone from silver in the tuner back at worlds last year to now, I mean, you were, you were the female swimmer of the year. You broke a world record this year. You, you put up times that, you know, are, are right behind Reagan, the, the world record holder in the hundred tuner backstroke. Um, do you, you talked about earlier how you're, you know, much more focused on the process than times. Um, have you been able to put this year in 2020, into perspective in terms of like where you're at ranked in the world time-wise? Um, I, you know, you obviously do look at that kind of stuff because it's, um, you know, like a pat on the back to not only myself, my coach and my teammates, just like getting me across the line to where I was. Um, what was the question? Sorry. (laughs) Uh, you know, when you, when you look back on the year you had, especially for, for heading into this Olympic year. Um, where, how do you put that into perspective? Uh, because I mean, as of right now, you're kind of a front runner um, in multiple events, you know, heading into an Olympic games. Um, you know, Reagan's still what a second in a more in front of me myself. So, you know, my coach always says, if you're not being chased, you're the one chasing somebody else. So, you know, I put a lot of my time and effort in training, chasing Reagan. She, you know, she's the number one star at the moment in the backstroke events and, you know, Katinka Hozu and the IM. So I'm the one who's chasing people. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people chasing me as well, but I'm hungry for something that's in front of me for now. Or do you feel like you're more comfortable in that position as opposed to being the one that is chased? For sure. I mean, it's definitely it makes you more driven uh, when you want to get to a certain point, whether if, you know, you're the one person standing there, you're like, Oh yeah. Like I'm sure people, I've never been in that position, but I'm sure people have are still driven, but you know, they have that, that thing against their name that, you know, they're number one in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it seems like a good position to be in, especially for you heading into that, um, you in, into this Olympic year, which, which is cool. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so we've, we've talked for quite a bit. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, heading into this year, you know, we, we just mm-hmm. crossed the threshold for 2021. It's officially the Olympic year. Um, over these next couple months, do you have any competitions or anything you're kind of looking forward to in the near future? Yeah, so my first competition of the year is in January from the 22nd to the 25th, I think, which is down in Adelaide. Um, 
you know, that'll be quite interesting considering we had a bit of time off over Christmas. So that's our first meet of the year. And, you know, fingers crossed that COVID cases in Australia keep decreasing. Otherwise, you know, the meets that we had planned for the year um, will get cancelled. So New South Wales is one of the hotspots at the moment. And I think in April and March, we were supposed to be going down that way. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, our timeline for the year will match up with how it's supposed to. Gotcha. Uh, so yep. it, 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 same here. We, uh, we're we having meets, but it's, you know, kind of yeah. kind of a little dicey. So fingers crossed that things continue to go well. Um, Kaylee, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me for a bit. Any parting thoughts before we sign off? No, but thank you for having me on. <laughs>